The old soldier was going on leave. I'm tired on the way, I'm hungry. I reached the village, knocked on the last hut. Let the road person rest. An old woman opened the door. Come in, soldier. Don't you have something to eat, mistress? The old woman has plenty of everything, but she was stingy to feed the soldier, pretended to be an orphan. Oh, good man, I haven't eaten anything myself today yet. There's nothing. Well, no, no, the soldier says. Then he noticed an axe under the bench. If there is nothing else, you can cook porridge from an axe. The hostess threw up her hands. How to cook porridge from an axe? Here's how, give me the cauldron. The old woman brought the cauldron, the soldier washed the axe, lowered it into the cauldron, poured water and put it on the fire. The old woman looks at the soldier, does not take her eyes off. The soldier took out a spoon, stirring the brew. I tried it. Well, how? The old woman asks. It will be ready soon, the soldier replies, it's just a pity that there is nothing to salt with. I have some salt, salt it. The soldier salted, tried again. Good. If only here and a handful of cereals. The old woman fussed, brought a bag of cereals from somewhere. Take it, fill it up as needed. I filled the brew with grits. Boiled, boiled, stirred, tasted. The old woman looks at the soldier with all her eyes, she can't tear herself away. Oh, and the porridge is good. The soldier licked his lips. As if here and a little butter it would be absolutely delicious. The old woman also had butter. Flavored porridge. Well, old woman, now give me bread and take a spoon. Let's eat porridge. I didn't think you could cook such a good porridge out of an axe, the old woman marvels. We ate porridge together. The old woman asks. A servant. When are we going to eat an axe? Yes, see, he's not boiled, the soldier replied. I'll finish it somewhere on the road and have breakfast. He immediately hid the axe in his satchel, said goodbye to the hostess, and went to another village. That's how the soldier ate porridge and took the axe away. Once upon a time there was an old man with an old woman. The old man asks. Bake, old woman, a bun. What is the oven made of? There is no flour, the old woman answers him. A, the old woman. Scratch on the box, mark on the sausack, maybe there will be enough flour. The old woman took a wing, scratched it on the box, swept it on the sausack, and there were two handfuls of flour. Kneaded on sour cream, fried in oil and put it on the window to cool. Kalabak lay down, lay down, and suddenly rolled from the window to the bench, from the bench to the floor, across the floor and to the door, jumped over the threshold into the hall, from the hall to the porch, from the porch to the yard, from the yard to the gate, on and on. The gingerbread man rolls along the road, and a hare meets him. Kalabak, Kalabak. I'll eat you. Don't eat me, oblique bunny. I'll sing you a song, said Kalabak and sang. I'm a bun, a bun. I am scratched by the box, by Susak Meaton, on sour cream meshin, yes, in the oil of yarn, the window is cold, I left my grandfather, I left my grandmother, and it's not tricky to get away from you, the hare. And he rolled on, only the hare saw him. A gingerbread man rolls, and a wolf meets him. Kalabak. Kalabak. I'll eat you. Don't eat me, grey wolf. I'll sing you a song, said Kalabak and sang. I'm a bun, a bun. I am scratched by the box, by Susak Meaton, on sour cream meshin, yes, in the oil of yarn, the window is cold, I left my grandfather, I left my grandmother, I left the hare, and it's not tricky to get away from you, the wolf. And he rolled on, only the wolf saw him. A gingerbread man is rolling. And a bear is coming towards him. Kalabak, Kalabak. I'll eat you. Don't eat me, clubfoot. I'll sing you a song, said Kalabak and sang. I'm a bun, a bun. I am scratched by the box, by Susak Meaton, on sour cream meshin, yes, in the oil of yarn, the window is cold, I left my grandfather, I left my grandmother, I left the hare, I left the wolf, and it's not tricky to get away from you, bear. And he rolled away again, only the bear saw him. Rolling, rolling Kalabak. Then towards him a fox. Hello, Kalabak. How pretty you are. Kalabak, Kalabak. I'll eat you. Don't eat me, fox. I'll sing you a song, said Kalabak and sang. I'm a bun, a bun. I am scratched by the box, by Susak Meaton, on sour cream meshin, yes, in the oil of yarn, the window is cold, I left my grandfather, I left my grandmother, I left the hare, I left the wolf, and he left the bear, and from you, fox, and even more so I will leave. What a nice song. Said the fox. But I, Kalabak, have become old, I can't hear well, sit down on my muzzle and sing again louder. Kalabak jumped on the fox's muzzle and sang the same song. Thank you, Kalabak. A nice song, I would have listened to it. Sit on my tongue and sing for the last time, said the fox and stuck out her tongue, the bun jumped on her tongue, and the fox on him. And she ate a bun. There is a teramak in the field. A mouse Narushka runs past. 
I saw that Terumak stopped and asked, Terum Terumak? Who lives in the tower? No one responds. The mouse entered the Terumak and began to lie there. A frog croaker jumped up to the Terum and asked, Terum Terumak? Who lives in the tower? I'm a mouse Narushka. And who are you? And I'm a croaking frog. Come live with me. The frog jumped into the Terumak. They began to live together. A bunny is running past. He stopped and asked, Terum Terumak? Who lives in the tower? I, the mouse Narushka. I, the frog croaker. And who are you? And I'm a bunny run. Come live with us. The hare is jumping into the Terumak. The three of them began to live. A fox sister is walking by. She knocked on the window and asked, Terum Terumak? Who lives in the tower? I'm a mouse Narushka. I, the frog croaker. I'm a bunny run. And who are you? And I'm a fox sister. Come live with us. The fox climbed into the Terumak. The four of them began to live together. A top gray side came running, looked in the door and asked, Terum Terumak? Who lives in the tower? I'm a mouse Narushka. I, the frog croaker. I'm a bunny run. I, the fox sister. And who are you? And I'm a top gray side. Come live with us. The wolf got into the Terumak. The five of them began to live. Here they live in a Teremka, they sing songs. Suddenly there is a club-footed bear. The bear saw the Terumak, heard the songs, stopped and roared at the top of his lungs, Terum Terumak, who lives in the tower. I'm a mouse Narushka. I, the frog croaker. I'm a bunny run. I, the fox sister. I, the top gray side. And who are you? And I'm a club-footed bear. Come live with us. The bear climbed into the Terumak. He climbed, 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 he couldn't get in and said, and I'd rather live on your roof. Yes, you will crush us. No, I won't crush it. Well, get in. The bear climbed onto the roof and just sat down, fuck. The Terumak collapsed. The Terumak cracked, fell sideways and collapsed all over. Barely had time to jump out of it of Mouse Narushka, a frog croak, a bunny run, a fox sister, a top gray side, all safe and sound. They began to carry logs, saw boards, to build a new Terramok. They built it better than the previous one. Once upon a time there was a grandfather and grandmother. They had a granddaughter Masha. Once the girlfriends gathered in the forest for mushrooms and berries. They came to invite Masha with them. Grandpa, Grandma, says Masha, let me go to the forest with my friends. Grandparents answer. Go, just keep up with your girlfriends, or you'll get lost. The girls came to the forest, began to collect mushrooms and berries. Here's Masha tree by tree, bush by bush, and she went far, far away from her girlfriends. She began to smile, began to call them. And the girlfriends do not hear, do not respond. Masha walked, walked through the forest she got completely lost. She came to the very wilderness, to the very thicket. He sees there is a hut. Masha knocked on the door they don't answer. She pushed the door, the door opened. Masha entered the hut, sat down at the window on a bench. Sat down and thinks. Who lives here? Why can't anyone be seen? And in that hut there lived a huge bear. Only he wasn't at home then. He was walking in the woods. The bear returned in the evening, saw Masha, was delighted. Aha, he says, now I won't let you go. You're going to live with me. You'll heat the stove, you'll cook porridge, feed me porridge. Masha was upset, grieved, but nothing can be done. She began to live with a bear in a hut. The bear will go into the forest for the whole day, and Masha is being punished not to leave the hut without him. And if you leave, he says, I'll catch you anyway, and then I'll eat you. Masha began to think how she could escape from the bear. There's a forest all around, he doesn't know which way to go, there's no one to ask she thought, thought, and came up with it. Once a bear comes from the forest, and Masha says to him, Bear, bear, let me go to the village for a day. I'll take gifts to grandma and grandpa. No, says the bear, you will get lost in the forest. Give me the goodies, I'll take them myself. And that's what Masha needs. She baked pies, took out a big, big box and said to the bear. Here, look. I'll put the pies in the box, and you take them to grandpa and grandma. Yes, remember. Do not open the box on the way, do not take out the pies. I'll climb the oak tree, I'll keep an eye on you. Okay, the bear answers, give me the box. Masha says. Go out on the porch, see if it's raining. 
As soon as the bear came out on the porch, Masha immediately climbed into the box and put a dish with pies on her head. The bear returned, seized the box as ready. I put him on my back and went to the village. A bear walks between the Christmas trees, a bear wanders between the birches, descends into the ravines, rises to the hills. He walked, walked, got tired and said. I ll sit on a stump, I lead a pie. And Masha is out of the box. I see, I see. Don't sit on the stump, don't eat the pie. Bring it to grandma, bring it to grandpa. Look how big eyed, says the bear, he sees everything. He picked up the box and went on. He walked, 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 stopped, sat down and said. I ll sit on a stump, I lead a pie. And Masha is out of the box again. I see, I see. Don't sit on the stump, don't eat the pie. Bring it to grandma, bring it to grandpa. The bear was surprised. That's how sly. Sitting high, looking far away. Got up and went quickly. I came to the village, found the house where my grandparents lived, and let's knock on the gate with all our might. Knock knock knock. Unlock it, open it. I brought you some goodies from Masha. And the dogs smelled the bear and rushed at him. They're running from all the yards, barking. The bear got scared, put the box at the gate and set off into the forest without looking back. Grandfather and grandmother came out here to the gate. They see the boxes standing. What's in the box? Grandma says. And grandpa lifted the lid, looks and does not believe his eyes. Masha is sitting in the box, alive and well. Grandfather and grandmother were delighted. They began to hug Masha, kiss her, call her a good girl. There are good people in the world, there are worse, and there are those who are not ashamed of their brother. It was to such and such that the little Havrashechka got. She remained an orphan, these people took her, fed her and starved her to work, she weaves, she spins, she cleans, she is responsible for everything. And her mistress had three daughters. The eldest was called one, Eid, the middle two Eid, and the smaller one was called Triglazka. The daughters only knew what to sit at the gate, look at the street, and the little Havrashechka worked for them, she sheathed them, spun and wove for them, and never heard a kind word. Sometimes a little Havrashechka would come out in the field, hug her pockmarked cow, lie down on her neck, and tell her how hard it is for her to live and live, mother cow. They beat me, they scold me, they don't give me bread, they don't tell me to cry. By tomorrow, five pounds have been ordered to be strained, tapped, whitewashed, and rolled into pipes. And the cow answered her, Red Maiden, get into one of my ears, and get out of the other, everything will work. And so it came true. The red girl will get out of the ear, everything is ready, and it is woven, and whitewashed, and rolled into the pipes. She will take the canvases to the hostess. She will look, groan, hide in a trunk, and she will ask even more work. Havrashechka will come to the cow again, he will fit into one ear, he will get out into the other, and take a ready-made one, he will bring it to the hostess. Here the hostess called her daughter one-eyed, and says to her, my daughter is good, my daughter is pretty. Go and see who helps the orphan, and weaves, and spins, and rolls into the pipes. When I went with Havrashechka to the forest, went with her to the field, forgot her mother's order, got hot in the sun, laid down on the grass. And Havrashechka says, sleep, peep hole, sleep, peep hole, peep hole and fell asleep. While the one-eyed girl was sleeping, the cow had done everything and whitewashed it. The hostess did not find out anything, she sent a second daughter, a two-eyed one. My daughter is good, my daughter is pretty. Go, look. Who is helping an orphan? The two-eyed girl also got hot in the sun and lay down on the grass, forgot her mother's order, and closed her eyes. And Havrashechka cradles, sleep, peep hole, sleep, the other. The cow was stuffed, whitewashed, rolled into the pipes, and the two-eyed girl was still asleep. The old woman got angry, on the third day she sent a trip and gave the orphan even more work. And Triglaska, like her older sisters, jumped, jumped, got soaked in the sun, and fell on the grass. Havrashechka sings, sleep, peep hole, sleep, the other. And I forgot about the third eye. Two of the eyes of the Triglaska fell asleep, and the third looks and sees everything, how the red maiden got into one ear, 
got out into the other and picked up the finished canvases. Triglaska returned home and told her mother everything. The old woman was delighted. The next day she came to her husband, cut the pockmarked cow. The old man so, so, what are you, old woman, in your mind? The cow is young, good. Cut, and that's all. The old man sharpened a knife. Havrashechka ran to the cow, mother cow. They want to cut you. And you, red maiden, don't eat my meat, collect my bones, tie them in a handkerchief, bury them in the garden, and never forget me. Water the bones every morning. The old man slaughtered a cow. Havrashechka did everything that the cow bequeathed. She starved, did not take her meat in her mouth buried her bones and watered them every day in the garden and an apple tree grew out of them but what apples are hanging on it the leaves are rustling gold the twigs are bending silver whoever goes by stops whoever passes close looks in a lot of time has passed you never know one eyed two eyed and three eyed walked once in the garden at that time a strong man was driving by rich curly haired young saw the apples, began to touch the girls, beautiful girls. He says. Which one of you will give me an apple, she will marry me. And the three sisters rushed one in front of the other to the apple tree. And the apples were hanging low, they were under your hands, and then they rose high, far above your heads. The sisters wanted to knock them down, the leaves of the eyes fall asleep, they wanted to tear them off, the knots of the braids unravel, no matter how they fought, no matter how they rushed, they tore their hands, but they could not get them. Havrashechka came up, the twigs bowed to her, and the apples sank to her. She treated that strong man, and he married her, and she began to live well, not to know anything. Once upon a time there was a cat, a blackbird and a cockerel a golden comb. They lived in the forest, in a hut. The cat and the blackbird go to the forest to chop wood and leave the cockerel alone. They leave they are severely punished. We'll go far away and you stay at home, but don't give a voice, when the fox comes, don't look out the window. The fox found out that the cat and the blackbird were not at home, ran to the hut, sat down under the window and sang. Cockerel, cockerel, golden scallop, oil head, silk beard, look out the window, I'll give you a pea. The cockerel put his head out the window. The fox grabbed him in its claws, carried him to its burrow. The cockerel screamed. A fox is carrying me for the dark forests, for fast rivers, for the high mountains cat and thrush, save me. The cat and the thrush heard, rushed in pursuit and took the cockerel from the fox. Another time the cat and the blackbird went into the forest to chop wood and again punished. Well, now, rooster, don't look out the window, we'll go even further, we won't hear your voice. They left, and the fox ran back to the hut and sang. Cockerel, cockerel, golden scallop, oil head, silk beard, look out the window, I'll give you a pea. The cockerel sat silent. And the fox again. The guys ran, scattered the wheat, the chickens are pecking, roosters are not given the cockerel put his head out the window. Co co co. How do they not give? The fox grabbed him in his claws, carried him to his hole. The cockerel shouted. A fox is carrying me for the dark forests, for fast rivers, for the high mountains. Cat and brush, save me. The cat and the blackbird heard and gave chase. The cat runs, the blackbird flies. They caught up with the fox the cat pulls, the thrush pecks, and took away the cockerel. For a long time, for a short time, the cat and the blackbird gathered again in the forest to chop firewood. Leaving, the cockerel is strictly punished. Do not listen to the fox, do not look out the window, we will go even further, we will not hear your voice. And the cat and the blackbird went far into the forest to chop wood. And the fox is right there. She sat down under the window and sings. Cockerel, cockerel, golden scallop, oil head, silk beard, look out the window, I'll give you a pea. The cockerel sits silent. And the fox again. The guys ran, scattered the wheat, the chickens are pecking, roosters are not given. The cockerel keeps quiet. And the fox again. People fled, nuts were poured, the chickens are pecking, roosters are not given. The cockerel put his head out the window. Co co co. How do they not give? The fox grabbed him tightly in his claws, carried him to his hole, behind dark forests, behind fast rivers, behind high mountains. 
No matter how much the cockerel screamed or called, the cat and the thrush did not hear him. And when they returned home, there was no cockerel. The cat and the blackbird ran along the fox tracks. The cat runs, the blackbird flies. They ran to the fox hole. The cat has set up the caterpillars and let's practice. Tren, Bren, caterpillars, golden strings. Is Lasafia Kuma still at home, is he in his warm nest? The fox listened, listened and thinks. Let me see who is playing the harp so well, singing sweetly. She took it and got out of the hole. The cat and the blackbird grabbed her and let's beat her. They beat and beat her until she took her feet away. They took a cockerel, put it in a basket and brought it home. And since then they began to live and be, and still live. In ancient times there lived a chicken, a mouse and a black grouse. One day a chicken found a barley grain, and even clucked with joy, I found a grain, I found a grain, we need to grind it, and who will carry it to the mill? Not me, said the mouse. Not me, said the grouse. There's nothing to do, the chicken took the grain and carried it. I came to the mill, ground the grain. Who will take the flour home? I asked. Not me, said the mouse. And not me, said the grouse. There's nothing to do, the chicken took the flour and brought it home. Who will need the bread? Asked the chicken. Not me, said the mouse. And not me, said the grouse. The chicken needed the dough, and the stove was flooded, and the bread itself was put in the oven. The loaf came out to glory, lush and ruddy. The chicken put it on the table and asks, and who will eat it? Me, the mouse shouted. And me, the grouse shouted. And they both sat down at the table. Once upon a time there was a cockerel and a chicken. The cockerel was in a hurry, but he was in a hurry, and the hen owes himself in sentences. Petya, take your time. Petya, take your time. Once a cockerel pecked bean seeds, but in a hurry and choked. Choked, does not breathe, does not hear, does not move. The chicken was frightened, rushed to the hostess, shouted. Oh, hostess, let the butter quickly lubricate the neck of the cockerel. The cockerel choked on a bean seed. The hostess says. Run quickly to the cow, ask her for milk, and I'll knock down the butter. The chicken rushed to the cow. Cow, dear, give me some milk soon, the hostess will knock down an olive from the milk, I will smear the neck of the cockerel with an oil. The cockerel choked on a bean seed. Go quickly to the owner, let him bring me fresh herbs. The chicken runs to the owner. Master. Master. Give the cow some fresh grass soon, the cow will give milk, the hostess will knock the butter out of the milk, I'll smear the cockerel's neck with the butter. The cockerel choked on a bean seed. Run quickly to the blacksmith for a scythe, says the owner. The chicken rushed to the blacksmith with all her legs. Blacksmith, blacksmith, give the owner a good scythe soon. The owner will give the cow grass, the cow will give milk, the hostess will give me butter, I will lubricate the neck of the cockerel. The cockerel choked on a bean seed. The blacksmith gave the owner a new scythe, the owner gave the cow fresh grass, the cow gave milk, the hostess knocked down butter, gave butter to the chicken. The chicken oiled the neck of the cockerel. The bean seed slipped through. The cockerel jumped up alive and sang at the top of his voice. Coo Carver. Fox, hare and rooster Once upon a time there was a fox and a hare. The fox had an ice hut, and the bunny had a bast, spring came red the fox melted, and the bunny stands in the old way. The fox asked the bunny to warm up, and the bunny was kicked out. An expensive bunny is walking and crying, and dogs are meeting him. Tyaf, Tyaf, Tyaf. What are you crying about, bunny? And the bunny says. Get off, dogs. How can I not cry? I had a bast hut, and the fox had an ice one, she asked to come to me, and she kicked me out. Don't cry, bunny. The dogs say. We'll kick her out. No, don't kick me out. No, we'll kick you out. We came to the hut. Tyaf, Tyaf, Tyaf. Go, fox, out. And she s with them from the oven. As soon as I jump out, as soon as I jump out, pieces will go down the alleys. The dogs got scared and left. The bunny goes and cries again. The bear meets him. What are you crying about, bunny? And the bunny says. Get off, bear. How can I not cry? I had a bast hut howling, and the fox had an ice one, she asked to come to me, and she kicked me out. Don't cry, bunny. Says the bear. I'll kick her out. No, you won't. The dogs were driven they didn't drive them out, and you won't drive them out. No, I'll kick you out. Let's go drive. Go, fox, out. And she's from the oven. 
As soon as I jump out, as soon as I jump out, pieces will go down the alleys. The bear got scared and left. The bunny is coming again and crying, and the bull is coming towards him. What are you crying about, bunny? Get off, bull. How can I not cry? I had a bast hut, and a fox had a nice one, she asked to come to me, and she kicked me out. Come on, I'll kick her out. No, bull, you won't drive me out. The dogs were driven not driven out, the bear drove not driven out, and you will not drive out. No, I'll kick you out. We came to the hut. Go, fox, out. And she's from the oven. As soon as I jump out, as soon as I jump out, pieces will go down the alleys. The bull got scared and left. The bunny goes again and cries, and a cock with a scythe meets him. Kukureku. What are you crying about, bunny? Get off, rooster. How can I not cry? I had a bast hut, and a fox had a nice one, she asked to come to me, and she kicked me out. Come on, I'll kick you out. No, you won't. The dogs were driven not driven out, the bear drove not driven out, the bull drove not driven out, and you will not drive out. No, I will drive out. They came to the hut. Kukureku. I carry a scythe on my shoulders, I want to whip a fox. Go, fox, out. And she heard, was scared, says. I'm getting dressed. The rooster again. Kukureku. I carry a scythe on my shoulders, I want to whip a fox. Go, fox, out. And she says. I'm putting on a fur coat. Rooster for the third time. Kukureku. I carry a scythe on my shoulders, I want to whip a fox. Go, fox, out. The fox ran out, he cut her down with a scythe, and began to live and live with the bunny, and make good. Here's a fairy tale for you, and a crinkle of butter for me. When you think about how great God's light is, rich and poor people live in it, and they are all spacious, and the Lord sees and reasons with them all. The luxurious live and celebrate, the miserable live and work, everyone has their share. In the royal chambers, in the prince's halls, in the high terum, Nesme Anna, the princess, flaunted. What a life she had, what freedom, what luxury. There is a lot of everything, everything is what the soul wants, but she never smiled, never laughed, as if her heart was not happy about anything. It was bitter for the Tsar father to look at his sad daughter. He opens his royal chambers to anyone who wishes to be his guest. Let them, he says, try to cheer up Nesmeana, the princess, whoever succeeds, she will be a wife. As soon as he uttered this, the people at the prince's gate began to boil. From all sides they go, they go and princes and princes, and boyers and nobles, regimental and ordinary, feasts have begun, honey has poured the princess still does not laugh. At the other end, an honest worker lived in his corner, in the mornings he cleaned the yard, in the evenings he grazed cattle, was an incessant labor. His master is a rich man, truthful, did not offend with a fee. As soon as the year was over, he put a bag of money on the table for him. Take it, he says, as much as you want. And he went through the door and out. The employee came up to the table and thinks. How not to sin before God, not to put too much for the work. He chose only one piece of money, squeezed it in a handful, and decided to drink some water, bent down into the well the money rolled out of him then sank to the bottom. The poor man had nothing to do with it. Another man in his place would have cried, whined, and would have folded his hands in frustration, but he did not. God sends everything, he says, the Lord knows who to give what to, whom he gives money to, from whom he takes the last. It's obvious that I've been doing poorly, I haven't worked hard enough, now I'll become harder? And back to work every case in his hands is burning with fire. The deadline is over, another year has passed, the owner has a bag of money on the table for him. Take it, he says, as much as your soul wants. And he went through the door and out. The worker thinks again, so as not to anger God, not to put too much for work, he took the money, went to get drunk and accidentally let it out of his hands, the money fell into the well and sank. He set to work even harder. He doesn't get enough sleep at night, he doesn't eat enough during the day. You see, whose bread is drying, turning yellow, and his master is getting all beauty, whose cattle are curling their legs and kicking him down the street, whose horses are being dragged downhill, and he can't be restrained. The owner understood who to thank, who to thank. The deadline is over, the third year has passed, he has a lot of money on the table. Take, little worker, as much as your soul wants, your work, yours and money, and he walked out. The worker takes one piece of money again, goes to the well to drink water low and behold, the last money is intact, and the previous two have floated up. He picked them up, guessed that God had rewarded him for his labors, he was delighted and thought, it's time for me to see the white light, to recognize people. 
I thought about it and went wherever my eyes look. He goes to the field, the mouse runs. Kovalek, dear Kumanek, give me some money, I'll be useful to you myself. I gave her some money. It goes through the forest, a beetle crawls. Kovalek, dear Kumanek, give me some money, I'll be useful to you myself. I gave him some money, too. Swam the river, met a catfish. Kovalek, dear Kumanek, give me some money, I'll be useful to you myself. He did not refuse that either, he gave the last one. I came to the city myself, there are people there, there are doors. I looked at it, the worker turned around in all directions, where to go he does not know. And in front of him are the royal chambers, decorated with silver and gold, the princess is sitting at the window and looking straight at him. Where to go? It clouded his eyes, found a dream on him, and he fell right into the mud. A catfish with a big mustache came from nowhere, followed by an old man bug, a haircut mouse, everyone came running. They take care of please, a mouse takes off a dress, a beetle cleans boots, catfish drives away flies. The princess Nesmeana looked, looked at their services and laughed. Who, who amuse my daughter? The king asks. The one says. I, the other. I know. Said the princess Nesmeana. That man over there? And pointed to the employee. Immediately he was taken to the palace, and the worker stood before the royal face well done well done. The Tsar kept his royal word, what he promised, he granted. I say, wasn't it in a dream that the employee was dreaming? They assure that there is no, the true truth was so you have to believe. One day Cossack was driving along the road and drove into a dense forest. In that forest there is a haystack on the thaw. The Cossack stopped to rest a little, lay down beside him and lit a pipe, smoke, smoke, and did not see how he dropped a spark into the hay. The Cossack mounted his horse and set off on his way. He had not taken ten steps when a flame broke out and lit up the whole forest. The Cossack looked around, looked a haystack was burning, and a red girl was standing in the fire and said in a loud voice. Cossack, a good man. Deliver me from death. How can I save you? There are flames all around, there is no approach to you. Put your pike in the fire, I'll get out of it. The Cossack thrust his pike into the fire, and turned away from the great heat himself. Immediately the red maiden turned into a snake, climbed onto a pike, slid onto the Cossack's neck, wrapped herself around his neck three times, and took the tail in her teeth. The Cossack was scared, he wouldn't figure out what to do and how to be. The snake was saying in a human voice. Don't be afraid, good fellow. Carry me on your neck for seven years and search for the Tin Kingdom, and when you come to that kingdom, stay and live there for another seven years without a way out. You will serve this service, you will be happy. The Cossack went to look for the Tin Kingdom. It took a lot of time, a lot of water flowed away, at the end of the seven the Rai reached a steep mountain, there is a tin castle on that mountain, a high white stone wall around the castle. The Cossack galloped up the mountain, the wall parted in front of him, and he drove into a wide courtyard. At that moment, a snake broke from his neck, hit the damp ground, turned into a soul maiden, and disappeared from his eyes as if she had not been. The Cossack put his good horse in the stable, entered the palace and began to inspect the rooms. Everywhere there are mirrors, silver and velvet, and nowhere to see a single human soul. Hey, the Cossack thinks, where have I stopped? Who will feed and water me? I just thought, lo and behold the table is set in front of him, there is plenty to drink and eat on the table. He had a snack and drank and decided to go to the horse to see. He comes to the stable the horse is standing in the stall and eating oats. Well, this is a good thing. It means you can live without me. For a long time the Cossack stayed in the tin castle, and mortal boredom took him. Is it a joke he is always alone? There's no one to talk to. He took it into his head to go to the free world, only wherever he rushes, the walls are high everywhere, there is no entrance or exit. For his annoyance, it seemed to him, the good fellow grabbed a stick, entered the palace, and let's beat mirrors and glass, tear velvet, break chairs, throw silver. Maybe the owner will come out and let him out. No, no one is. The Cossack went to bed. The next day he woke up, walked around and decided to have a snack, he looks back and forth there's nothing for him. A, she thinks, she beats herself a slave, if she reaps uncleanly. Just repented, as now both food and drink everything is ready. Three days passed, the Cossack woke up in the morning, looked out the window his good horse was saddled at the porch. What would that mean? I washed, dressed, took my lung pike and went out into the wide courtyard. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a red maiden appeared. Hello, good fellow. Seven years are over you have saved me from the ultimate destruction. Know this. I am the king's daughter. The immortal Kashe took me away from my father, for my mother, wanted to marry me, but I mocked him, so he became embittered and turned me into a fierce snake. Thank you for your long service. Now let's go to my father, he will reward you with a gold treasury and precious stones, you do not take anything, but ask for a barrel that is in the basement. 
and what is the self-interest in it? Roll the barrel to the right side immediately the palace will appear, roll to the left the palace will disappear. Good said the Cossack. He mounted his horse, and took the beautiful princess with him, the high wells themselves parted in front of them, and they set off on their way. Whether for a long time or for a short time, a Cossack comes with the princess to the king. The king saw his daughter, rejoiced, began to thank, and gives the Cossack bags full of gold and pearls. Says the good fellow. I don't need any gold or pearls, give me that keg that's in the basement as a keepsake. You want a lot, brother. Well, there's nothing to do. My daughter is dearer to me than anything. It's not a pity for her in a barrel. Take it. The Cossack took the royal gift and went wandering around the world. He drove on and on, an ancient old man comes across him. The old man asks. Feed me, good fellow. The Cossack jumped off his horse, untied the barrel, rolled it to the right at the same moment the wonderful palace appeared. They both went up to the painted chambers and sat down at the set table. Hey, my faithful servants. The Cossack shouted. Feed and water my guest. Before he could say anything, the servants were carrying a whole bowl and three cauldrons of drink. The old man began to eat and praise, he ate a whole bowl, drank three cauldrons, grunted and said. Not enough, but there's nothing to do. Thanks for the bread and for the salt. They left the palace, the Cossack rolled his barrel to the left, and the palace was gone. Let's change, the old man says to the Cossack, I'll give you the sword, and you give me the barrel. What's the use of a sword? Why, this is a self-cutting sword. It's only worth waving even if there is a countless force, it will beat everything. You see, the forest is growing, do you want me to make a trial? Then the old man took out his sword, waved it and said. Go, self-cutting sword, cut down the dense forest. The sword flew in well. Cut down trees and put them in fathoms, chopped them up and returned back to the owner. The Cossack did not hesitate for a long time, gave the old man a barrel, and took a self-cutting sword for himself, mounted a horse, and decided to return to the king. And a strong enemy came up under the capital city of that king, the Cossack saw a countless army, waved his sword at her. A self-cutting sword. Service service. Cut down the enemy's army. Heads flew. Less than an hour later, the enemy's power was gone. The king rode out to meet the Cossack, hugged him, kissed him, and immediately decided to marry him a beautiful princess. The wedding was rich, I was at that wedding, I drank honey, my mustache flowed, there was no mouth. 